Hey. What up, Steve? <laughs> and it's early. It is. And it is. We're recording. This is Stu and David. Uh, Phil and Storehouse podcast, episode 17. Yes, sir. And uh, what we thought we would do today is um, kind of wrap up a uh, the Veterans REI Live conference that uh, David and I were a part of. We were fortunate enough to be speakers, um, including, you know, gosh, there was some really amazing speakers uh, that, that uh, talked about, you know, their niche of real estate. And um, it was super interesting because, uh, you know, after, after it was all said and done, you know, Dave and I kind of went back through our notes and got to watch uh, all of the speakers over again. You know, everything was recorded. It was virtual. And um, what, we, what we noticed was that um, this, the conference in general, it was a real estate conference, right? And so every single speaker was talking about their different niche of real estate. And um, it started with a mindset talk and ended with a mindset talk, right? And then what also was interesting was that every single speaker in their presentation talked about mindset. I mean, almost every single speaker talked about mindset or um, just their why, you know, like the bigger purpose, like what, why are they doing this? You know, what's this all for? What's this all about? And um, so it, it's, you know, it's really interesting. And, and, you know, we talked about it in our presentation, but, but none of the, none of the speakers were told that they needed to, to talk about this kind of stuff. So, um, what we really came to the conclusion of it is mindset is everything, right? Um, so what we thought we would do today is kind of, um, put all of these presentations, um, going to come up with a, a few themes and, um, kind of break down some, some notes that we took on, on mindset and on finding your why. And, uh, and yeah, I thought it, thought it'd be kind of helpful. What do you think, Dave? Yeah, I think it'll be great. Um, you know, we got a couple points here to, to talk about and we could literally spend hours on this podcast, you know, trying to rehash everything that we learned, everything that people spoke on and what an incredible lineup of speakers. And, and the, the best part, uh, one of the best parts is, is all vets right? These are all people like you and me. They're people like a lot of our listeners, uh, men and women that are just crushing it, you know, and, and some of them doing full-time jobs and doing stuff on the side and as a transition plan or just as a, as a, a side gig or a, a side hustle and, and just doing incredible things. But yeah, I do love the fact that the conference was bookended with the importance of why and mindset. And, and so there's obviously something there, right? And a lot of the books that we're reading, a lot of the stuff that we're looking at, significant time is spent in those books, talk about uh, whoever the author is, their why, how to develop whys, how to develop that that process to get after exactly what it is that you want to do, big picture wise. So, um, yeah, let's do it. Pretty excited about it, buddy. Okay, all right. So, first, uh, first kind of bullet point that we came up with um, was you got to create the optimal environment through intentional choices. Uh, so you have to be intentional to create that environment, to develop your why. And, um, you know, David and I have talked a lot, a lot about that in our podcast. You know, we spent like the first five episodes on, you know, how we came up with our core values and developing that why. And, and really what we saw was uh, people's whys were um, bigger than your, your own situation. You know, it's bigger than a paycheck. It's bigger than, um, you know, all the material things that, that you have. And it must be, it, it comes from like a, a deeper purpose, right? Uh, we found, you know, there was uh, people, I mean, so one, one speaker gives 50% of his profits away uh, to a charity organization to, um, you know, support his purpose. Uh, you know, we give 10% of our profits away for our purpose. Um, you know, a lot of people's purposes are, are their family, you know, their children. Uh, you know, there's lots of causes out there. You know, we were trying to raise money uh, to build a home for a, a homeless veteran. So there's all these themes of, of finding that bigger purpose, that bigger why. Um, it's more than just, you know, a paycheck, your bottom line, you know, trying to get rich, right? Um, 
Next, we, we kind of talk about uh, choosing your friends is an intentional exercise, not a passive result. So you, you have to be intentional with putting yourself around people that's going to push you and to you know, force you to become better. And lastly, kind of at, you know, to be intentional with this environment is um, you have to invest in yourself. Um, it takes, you know, they're not going to teach you this in college. They're not going to, um, you know, high school. Um, you have to invest in yourself and, and force yourself to read, to get educated. Um, you know, there's a lot of books that we're going to probably talk about in here. You know, get those books, podcasts, um, go to meetups, uh, get around people that are going to force you to get better. Yeah, that's awesome. That's, uh, uh, you know, I, I think there's, there's so much, so much content there and so much richness, richness and, and, you know, as you create that environment and you set, you set up the, the surroundings, you also want to, you know, you start out there and look at kind of take an assessment and, and what, what is growing me, what is not growing me. It's so important to spend time and in, in really considering it. And sometimes that's an, a painful exercise, right? Uh, you know, sometimes just like working out when you're trying to cut the fat, you know, that, that's not easy. You sweat, uh, you might have some tears. I know when you work out, you cry a lot. So, you know, and it's a really awkward to spot Stu in the gym because he starts crying, tears come out. It's weird, but he's working hard. I can't do it. Can't do it. You know, but he's working hard and that's, and that's, and that's where you want to be. Um, and then as you start to kind of bring that environment in, look, look inside and, and cultivate the mindset, which is the second point is cultivate the infinite mindset. You know, you, you have to set, you have to set up some, some parameters and some very specific, um, uh, left and right bounds and, and really understand, okay, there is no finish line. So when I say set up bounds, it's not bounding yourself. It's, it's, it's really focusing and, and, and intentionally choosing that you will not stop. Uh, I, I've heard this quote now a, a few different times and, and I just love it just in a few different books now, just recently. Uh, but it's the uh, uh, Captain Hernan Cortes when he landed in Veracruz and, and started his conquest, right? And he, this was back in 1519, and he said, burn the ships. And, and what does that mean? What does it mean to burn the ships? Well, they landed on the beach, and he told his men, hey, burn the ships. There are no options. When, when retreat is an option, then it's there. It'll always be there, and you can, you can quit, and you can go back on it. Um, but, if, but if there's no ships to go back to, you got to move forward. There's no finish line. You're just constantly pressing forward and, and you're, you're intentionally seeking out the challenge that will continue you to drive uh, in that direction, right? And, and I think it's so important to develop that mindset. And there's so many ways to do that. You know, reading books, uh, podcasts, listening to Filling the Storehouse, you know, any of these things, conversations, coaches, mentors, like you mentioned, um, you know, all these different resources that are out there, a lot of them for free, but it's, it's that mindset. If it's there, you know, if you want to find it, it's out there. And I think uh, our interview with uh, Josh and Lisa Lannon, he said, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Do you remember that? Yeah, that was and awesome. I, it was awesome. I love that quote, but but it, it stuck with me because when you're ready, when you create that mindset, the conditions are, you're setting the conditions. And a lot like uh, Dave Piel said, um, and I've heard this a number of times too, when we're talking about luck, right? Luck is really where opportunity meets hard work. And I think these are all mindset things. They're, you know, they're not overnight things that happen. People don't just, you know, wake up and, and wow, I have a great business. Um, yeah. It's all about those habits. And, and, and that's something, you know, a book I'm reading right now is Atomic Habits. I know you've read it before too. I mean, so rich. It has yeah. so much stuff in there just to practically get you to move forward. Um, ways that, you know, one of my favorite co quotes, you know, he talks about goals and systems. And, and he says that uh, you do not rise to the level of your goals, you fall to the level of your systems. And it really is just a testament to the mindset of creating the habits, these small habits every single day that will get you in the direction that you want to go. And, and, and setting that system up instead of just saying, um, you know, here's my goal. I just want to achieve it. Here's my finish line. And he also highlights, he says, uh, you know, winners and losers have the same goal. That's not the goal that separates them. It's, it's what they're doing and it's their systems that they have in place. So I think creating that mindset is, is, is so important. Um, I think when you're creating that mindset and Stu, you touched on it with your friends, you have to choose to be accountable and you have to choose people that, that want to be held accountable. And, and, and this is where sometimes the pain comes in, right? You, you have these, 
these lifelong friends and maybe you realize through your assessment that they're just not helping you grow. And that could even be your parents. Um, and, and that's a painful thing. And I'm not saying you cut your parents off, you cut your friends off, but where are you investing your time? And if it's, if you're in the process of choosing friends and they don't want to get you better, then choose better friends. And that can be a painful thing. And it's not, it may sound callous, but at the end of the day, your time is limited where you spend it is finite and who you choose to spend it with is an intentional choice that, that you can make. So are you, are you saying that I probably should need to start trying to find a new friend? No. Yes. Because what I'm saying, and it was kind of awkward to be on this podcast. I didn't want to do it publicly like this, but you know, in this day and age when people break up via text and all that kind of stuff, or you unfriend someone on Facebook and that's like, Oh dang, they unfriended them. Hey, speaking of, speaking of Facebook, everybody, David just got his <laughs> Facebook page back. Yes, I did. So every single one of our listeners should go be his friend and yeah. like post stuff, like tag him on like everything. Yeah, I need friends. I need lots of friends. Um, he needs lots where I spend of my time. friends. I need lots of friends where I spend my time. Uh, thank you for that, Stu. You're welcome. Uh, but Dave, Dave is a big Facebook fan. Huge, huge Facebook fan. But hey, you know, and that's a, it's 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 funny that you bring that up. It's a mindset thing. You know, as we continue to look at the different ways to grow our business and to help people understand who we are and get to know us, you have to know your environment. You have to know what's around you. You have to understand the fact that Facebook is just it's a thing, and people spend a lot of time on Facebook. They spend a lot of time trying to get to know other people on Facebook and the friends, you know, how many friends do you probably have like what three friends, like for real three friends. And maybe two of them will say they're your friends and your Facebook <laughs> is probably what, like I got 500 friends. I got a thousand friends. Do you don't have a thousand friends, buddy? Dude, I have and, lots and, of friends. And most of those friends, like if it is a thousand, then 998 of those people are all crystals friends. So <laughs> yeah. you, just, you just inherited them. So don't even talk trash. <laughs> um, but back to the point, it was a mindset thing. And Stu being, you know, my best friend challenged me and he held me accountable and is holding me accountable to be intentional about ways that we become better known. Um, and that one of those means is social media. And, and so, yes, it is true. I, I, I kind of despise social media, but it is important and it is a, a very tangible way to, to, um, get to know folks and make connections and, and, uh, even choose within Facebook. I choose every day the feeds I want to follow. Right. So I think that's important. You have to be very intentional with all that stuff. And then finally, you know, how do you stand out? How are you different? You know, how does your mindset driving you to be different from those, from the competition? And, and I don't even think about the competition. I don't, I don't even know who our competition is. It's a waste of time. How do we best become our best selves? What are the little things that we do for our clients that let them know you're important? I value you. Thank you for honoring us. And let's do another deal together. And that's something that takes time. It's a mindset. You have to think through it and, and ultimately shows your belief in your product and your service. Yeah, that's huge. I mean, uh, one, one of the speakers was talking a lot about um, raising money. And, you know, he says that yeah, I've never sold anybody anything. I only sold, you know, they only, they come to me, right? You never sell anything that they're coming to you because they want it. But that means first that you have to believe in the service that you're providing. You have to believe in that product. And um, that's all up here, right? It's all up in your brain. Um, you know, to, to be that confident, um, you know, person that, is going to be bringing in that mindset, bringing in those people. Um, you know, it, it's, uh, it's good stuff, man. It's good stuff. When you, you attract like-minded folks, right? Like if you change your mindset, the people that are going to want to surround themselves with you or that you, that are, that, that are going to want to be part of your circle are the people that, that hold the same things dear that you do. If you and I didn't agree on our, our foundation of, of faith and tithing and, um, you know, the, the entrepreneurial mindset and the growth mindset, I mean, this wouldn't work. Right. And, and we have been exposed to our network to incredible human beings that drive us to be better. And it's all because that's that mindset. We're looking for that. We could easily look for the dudes and dudettes that hang out at the 
you know, at the local uh, brewery and just hang out and talk story and drink beer all day. And that, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just not the mindset that we've chosen and it's not the path that we've chosen. Yeah. It sounds kind of fun, but that's yeah. not, that's not. I, I like, uh, I like the, um, you know, the point that you made about uh, choosing to be held accountable because that, that can be hard, you know, like there can be some difficult conversations. Um, you know, so David and I are in a mastermind group or the war room mastermind. We have a small group um, of, of individuals and we meet on a, a bi, bi-monthly basis. And, you know, there's conversations in there where like, we're calling people out, you know, um, just last week, our conversation with one of the individuals was, I mean, he keeps on saying that he's got to hire somebody. He's got to hire somebody. He's got to hire somebody. And like, we were all finally like, all right, Hey, let's put it on the calendar. Let's set a date in the calendar that you have to get something done. And, and he immediately wanked and he knows who he is. If he's listening, you know who you are. <laughs> he wanked and he was called out in veterans live because he's yeah. a, he's a buddy of, uh, of, uh, Bill. So, yeah. Uh, but that's like, that's, you know, you got to decide to even put yourself in that situation, you know, because that's uncomfortable. It's, yeah. it's not fun to be called out by your friends. And, um, and to be fair, there's some individuals crushing it and he crushed yeah. it during Veterans Live and people loved his presentation. And so we're just encouraging him like, hey, dude, you need to do this because your your mindset is so big and you're crushing it. You know, you're flying, you're doing the Navy thing, you're doing this business that's amazing. Dude, you need to hire somebody to take some of that stuff off your plate so you can continue to grow for bigger and bigger. And, yeah, and it's, and it's, back, to that, it's the back to that infinite mindset. There's, there's never a finish line. You're you always growing, always going up. Right. Um, that's good stuff. It gets me fired up. Um, yeah, so, so how do you get there? You know, how do you, how do you kind of set this mindset? How do you start into it? And, and it comes back to, um, the daily process, you know, our first speaker, um, he, he calls it the process and you have to focus on intentionally taking action, um, to get you there. And it, it's not, it's not like a, a get you know rich quick scheme here it's 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 slow like it takes daily intentional action that's going to get you there um and there's a quote here that we wrote down it says every action you take is a vote for the type of person you wish to become no single instance will transform your beliefs but as the votes build up so does the evidence of your new identity that's pretty cool i like that um so you got to create su- success habits, right? You got to build those habits. And there's a book called Atomic Habits that uh, that you know we've read and David's reading again, and um, it's uh, it's pretty powerful. You know all these all these habits that you create, and there's you know there's tricks and kind of talks about some stuff that in the book that you can kind of help you get there a little bit quicker. Um, he says habits are the compound interest of self improvement. Um, one that, that I've really tried to implement is this uh, strategy called uh, habit stacking. And it's, you know, kind of where you uh, take a habit that you're already performing, that you already do every single day. And then you take one of your goals and you kind of, um, you know, look at those, those lead measures, those daily actions to get to that goal and stack it on something that you're already doing. So the example that I like to use a lot is uh reading the bible so i mean almost every single year i put down on my goal sheet that i want to read the bible you know read the entire bible you know book end to book end um and uh it never happens like i always get behind and never happens and we've even done it you know david and i are are like kind of in an, an accountability group for that too like for reading the bible we you know email and kind of talk about stuff and i've never finished it. I always get behind. I always stop making comments. Uh, but this year, what I did was start, I did, I tried this habit stacking thing and the stack is I get up every single morning and I immediately make coffee. Right. So I'll, I'll, my habit is go up, make my coffee, go use the restroom, kind of wake up and then go make my cup of coffee and I'll sit in my desk. And 
before I would just like start like jamming into emails and start working immediately. Now I've stacked reading the Bible with drinking coffee. So every single morning I'll sit down at my desk, I'll start sipping on my coffee and I open up the U version Bible app and I read through, you know, the mornings verses and, and it's, it's working. It really is like every single morning. Dude, we're on 201, man. I know. Day 201. Yeah. That's awesome. Yep. So, I mean, knock on wood, I'm, I'm on track, right? I'm over that halfway mark. I've created that habit. What, what does it say in, in the book? It's like 30 to 60, 30 to 60 days or 30 to 66 days, something like that. Something that, like that. Uh, yeah. That it takes um, to really build that habit. So it, it takes a little bit of time. Like you have to, you have to like pursue, you know, you have to continue to, to push through that. Um, so, um, the other thing that, that, um, really kind of hurts you is, is all the shiny objects, right? And, um, you have to limit those distractions, um, and, and keep focused. You know, there's, uh, lots of different ideas, strategies, um, but pick one and go with it. You know, the, the veterans live conference, you know, there's, there's lots of great speakers, great niches within real estate. And, and I get into this, you know, you listen to the Bigger Pockets podcast or you go to this Veterans Live conference and every single speaker is just killing it, right? They're making lots of money. They're doing great things. They're giving to big charities. And you're like, ooh, that sounds good. Ooh, I want to do that. Um, but, but you got to pick a strategy. You got to focus on it and don't get distracted by all these shiny objects. Um, there's, a, uh, um, there's a book. Oh, man, now I'm blanking on it. Just I just lost it. Um, deep work. Uh, there's a book called Deep Work, and um, and it's it's really good. It, it really kind of helps you um, learn how to focus, put distractions away. One distraction is this guy right here. You know the phone. Um, you know, so if you really are wanting to focus on something, um, you know, one of one of the other guys in our mastermind group is wanting to write a book and. You know, he's, he set a goal to write, what was it, like a thousand words a day or something like that? And yep, a thousand words a day. Yeah. And so, like, he, what he does is he puts his phone into another room. He turns off all of his websites, all of his other social media channels. And you got to focus. You got to, like, nail down what you're doing and don't get distracted by anything else. Um, and speaking of, uh, he's a thought leader. And that's kind of our next bullet point there is um, – into your daily process, you have to start kind of throwing yourself out there. You have to, um, you know, as much as David hates social media, uh, you got to become best known. It's not, you're not, you're not the best at your product or service. You, you got to be the best known. And you have to create that thought leadership platform where people are, you know, they, they already kind of know you. And that's, I mean, that's honestly, like, this is what, we're doing here. This is what this podcast is all about. You know, it's really fun. We love talking to people and we love kind of uh, discussing, you know, all of this stuff, but, but it's really to build that thought leadership platform. Um, and last, you know, everyone he talks about building a team, um, you know, building a business, real estate, investing, all this stuff, like you can't do it on your own. I mean, there's no way I trust me. I tried it. Um, and I never got where, not, never got anywhere fast. Like, uh, I failed tremendously multiple times because I was trying to do it all by myself. And until I kind of realized that, that real estate is a team sport, business is a team sport. Um, you know, you're never going to get anywhere. Um, so you have to really hire out a team, build a team. Um, you got to hire to scale. And you got to build those systems that are repeatable. You got to build those processes, those systems within the team members and find those team members um, like the book, good to great. You got to put the right people on the right seat of the bus. You have to find those people that are going to do the things that you don't want to do or that you're not good at. And then you focus on the stuff that you are good at and be intentional with that. So you now for me, like I'm good at a lot of stuff and David, not so much. I actually so, sometimes think you you caught the wrong bus and I think you're sometimes sitting at the wrong bus stop. Like I'm trying to figure out like <laughs> where you even like fit. You know what I mean? Short, and, short bus. 
and that's good, right? It's okay. It's okay. Uh, but no, there's a lot there, Stu. And there's a couple points that you made that I, I really, um, you know, really resonated. And when you talk about atomic habits, you can go to, I think it's atomic, atomic habits university or something like that. I can't remember his website. Um, it's, um, you know, he, he set it up and, and it's, it's scientific, right? There's, there's, it's not just like, this is not just like feel good stuff. Uh, the author's name is James clear. He didn't just like, Hey man, you know, uh, habits are a good thing and atomic is a cool word. So let's, like, he's put in years of study and practical application and there's metrics on his website to show like, when you do your, your, uh, habit stacking and, um, he, he broke it down to, if you get 1% better every single day over the course of a year, you're 37% better or something like that. And the inverse of that is not true. If, if you do not get better, you're like, it's, it's that, that drop off is significant and you're at 0% quick and you're just, you're, you're zero growth. And it's really interesting um, how he breaks it down scientifically. Right. And, and so this stuff isn't just, you know, Hey, develop your why cause it feels good and it's touchy feely. No, that the why drives people forward and there are ma- metrics behind it. And which I think is, is really important. And then you, you also were talking about the, the shiny objects, and someone years ago told me, um, they said, you need to be more like a laser beam and not a shotgun blast. And, and it, it was from the perspective of, you know, you shoot a shotgun and, and the further that, the further those beads get from the, from the muzzle, that it, it loses power, right? There's, there's just not, it, it's not very powerful for very long. Uh, but a laser beam, and you get hit with a laser beam, game over. And, and it just was such a great analogy and picture that, that uh, you know, just to kind of put word or pictures to, to the words you said. So, uh, you know, great, great points. It's good stuff. Yeah. The last thing that um, I wanted to kind of, you know, so, so like I said, we, we started, started the conference with mindset and we ended the conference with mindset. And the last speaker that, uh, that we had, um, it was a surprise. So Bill Allen was kind of running this, this entire conference. He was the, he was the host of it and um, he has gotten connected with um, a former NBA uh, all-star Walter Bond. Uh, he's, he's now a professional speaker. He's written multiple books. Um, he has uh, a leadership platform. He has a mastermind group himself. He's, he's a coach. He's a business coach. And uh, man, it was awesome. And, and we're not going to go into it here because what we really want for for our listeners to do is if you didn't uh, attend the conference if you didn't buy a ticket there's still an opportunity to to go back and listen and watch all of these uh, presentations you can still buy a ticket basically and i'm telling you the 99 dollars ticket is so worth it just to listen to the last what was it? It was like over an hour. It was like hour 15 minutes um, that Walter Bond talks about. And he has a book. I just bought it. I haven't read it yet, but just the concept is awesome. It's, it's this book uh, called swim. And you know, it, the, the subtitle is how a shark, a sucker fish and a parasite teach you leadership. It's mentoring and next level success. And his, his, his speech is like so off the charts. I mean, like, I was like ready to go freaking climb mountains after, you know, his talk. And, um, you know, there's, there's times where I'm like laughing. There's times when I'm crying. There's times when I'm like just fired up and like ready to go conquer the world. And that alone is worth the $99 ticket. Um, so, uh, I would encourage everyone here that didn't buy one to go back and watch that. I mean, it's, it's two full days, you know, it's broken down into each little segment. You can watch it kind of whenever you want. Um, but, you know, not only are you getting educated in all the different niches of real estate, but, but you're getting, you know, that last hour and 15 from Walter Bond, which people pay a lot of money to go listen to him talk. And then it is just pretty worth it. So um, at the end, we'll, we'll, or, and we'll put it in the show notes to the, the link. Right. And, and that $99, you know, uh, the why behind the conference, not only was to get veterans up to, to teach veterans and, and others, uh, but it, it goes towards, Stu mentioned that house uh, that we're trying to build for a homeless veteran. The the whole why behind the conference was was that, to raise money to build a house for a veteran. So it's that $99 isn't going to 
to stew, to bill, it's going to, to, to help a vet. And again, that was a well thought out why and, and a, a intent and purpose behind the, behind the meetings. So yeah, was, we're, uh, we're almost there. So I think we got um, an update from bill uh, yesterday or the day before um, that I think we're less than $5,000 away from, from building a house uh, for a veteran. And, and it's, we partnered through with the, the veterans community project, which is a nonprofit organization. So it's a tax write off if you want to give to the organization um, awesome. through our link and, uh, yeah, I mean, thirty-five thousand dollars builds a house for a homeless veteran, and and we're really close. Like we're almost there. And I mean, how cool is that? Like this one conference, we we can come out of it knowing that we just put a homeless veteran into a house. It's pretty cool. It's incredible. It's incredible. And one thing that I don't know why it keeps popping in my head, but Walter said, "Niches make riches," and I, and I love that. Um, you know, and it wasn't his whole point was not how do you become rich. It was developing the whys and really that focus and that niche and, and uh, the ultimately one of the side benefits of that niches make riches. So yeah. I like that. Um, but you know, and great segues Stu. Uh, what, so to kind of wrap this whole thing up, you know, what actions are you going to take? What are you going to do with this information, these resources that are out there? You listen to this, this podcast potentially, and, and what are you going to do with it? You know, there's a lot of a lot of feel good stuff that we talk about, but but how do you practically move forward? And just a couple thoughts. You know, so Stu mentioned we read the Bible every morning. Um, there's currently uh, a few different books I'm reading. So every morning is the Bible because we're holding each other accountable to get that read in a year. Um, Social Capitalist uh, is a book that uh, Lisa and Josh Landon wrote. They're the co-founders of Warriors Heart. We had them on a previous show. Awesome book. You want to talk about a why? You want to hear about about the struggles that, that people are willing to endure when their why is strong enough? Read that book. Uh, pick that up. We'll we'll also add a link to that in the show notes. They are incredible people, incredible uh, a mission that they have, and and Warriors Heart. Just uh, you know, we we absolutely love partnering with them. And then Killing Sacred Cows is a book by Garrett B. Gunnerson. It's a business book. It's an investment book, but so much in there about mindset. The whole book is about mindset. It does gives you some, give you some practical steps, but the entire book is about abundance versus scarcity mindset. It's incredible how that plays through everything and achieving your highest and your best purpose. And then of course, Atomic Habits, we've talked about that a couple of times. Uh, what a phenomenal book. So that's for me right now, those are the four books that I'm going through each, uh, every day I'm, I'm touching a few pages in, in each of those books. And, and really it's, it's to, to grow that mindset and to become more educated on, on these different things out there. So, so our challenge to you, is to be intentional, be intentional, be intentional about thinking about your why, write your why down, game it out. You know, whatever process you use to figure out your why, do that. Uh, the thing that gets you fired up in the morning, the, 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 what if it's an injustice in the world or if it's, it, you know, trying to, to build wells in Africa or whatever the, the cause may be, use that to fire you up and help you to create your why. Uh, your mindset, grow your mindset, pick up some books, pick up some podcasts, put this down, you know, and, 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 and if you need to optimize your environment, like we touched on, get in your calendar and Stu had touched on this on a previous guest that we had as well. Dr. Mills talking about scheduling in time, even if it's scheduling in, uh, you know, if you're talking about um, time with the family, you're talking about time that you're going to spend on Facebook and all that kind of stuff, block that stuff, build it into your calendar, block it. And, and be very intentional about your calendar and where you're spending your time. Don't sit in front of the TV and watch the news all day. It's not going to, it can suck you in. It's made to suck you in, right? It's pay for TV. It's made to suck you in. May, be very intentional about where you're spending your time. And then, you know, focus on, focus on that daily process. Again, create a checklist. Uh, you know, get in your calendar. Like we said, do whatever it is that's required that makes you be very intentional about where you're spending your time, with whom you're spending your time and, and where you're growing and the things that you're focused on. So we challenge you to do that today. Uh, last point to that. Uh, someone once told me, I think it was Dr. Mills years and years ago. He said, Hey, Hey, Hey David, you know, that Southern draw he's got. Hey, Hey David. <laughs> hey David. Uh, you show me your calendar and you show me your checkbook and I'll show you what's important to you. And I love that. Oh, I, love that. I like that. You know, where, where you, what, what's on your calendar and where you're spending your money is where your priorities are at. So take a look at those two simple things. And, and if you're wondering what your priorities are, th that's a good indicator. 
That's good stuff, man. Yeah, actually, in my Facebook Live that I posted yesterday that, that David is going to start today on the Facebook Live challenge because I'm holding him accountable, uh, I actually talked about that a little bit because I had all these intentions to do all these things, you know, within our business. And, and then, like, you know, emails started coming in and phone calls started coming in. And my chart got way off course. And, uh, but the stuff that I had on my calendar and the stuff that I got up early to, to, to get done, it got done. And, um, and that, you know, that was reading the Bible that was working out that was spending time with the family. And I have a time block on my calendar every single day. It says, put the phone down, dude, it's family time. And that's important to me. And I, I got to get that done. Um, so I love that, Dave. Love it. Yeah, buddy, this was fun. I I, uh, I love having guests. I look forward to our future guests. We're going to try and get a lineup of of the folks that spoke at Veterans Live, but but I do love these one on one chit chats. This is a lot of these conversations that, that we record are are the same conversations that we have uh, on a daily basis, which is awesome. So I encourage you to go find that. Go find your stew. Uh, well, preferably go find your David. Um, probably more value add there. <laughs> but, Go find that person or those people and, and, and grow, be intentional and grow. All right. Well, hope this uh, was helpful. Hope this brought some value to, uh, to your day, to your week. Um, go be intentional and more importantly, go fill your storehouse. Make it a great day, friend. See you. <laughs>